Hello, welcome back to the program. You're watching Sports Business with Orufo Ezaga. We're live from Nigeria, from Lagos, Nigeria, on Plus TV Africa. I have in this, I have in on the program today um, Nelson Ine, who is the the top guy for the MPFL in GTI, the investment banking partners of the league. I have um, Joseph Chimpap. Chimpampwe, who is the CEO of the Zambian Premier League, and I have Gary Allsmith from Ghana, who is um, a very, very top journalist um, in Ghana. All right. So we talked about we already talked about the media. Still a lot to say about the media, but right now let's talk about the fans because they are probably the most important stakeholder. Probably, if we don't get the fans, there's no sports business. How do we get the fans into our stadiums the way we used to do in, this, in the 80s and the 90s? Uh, let me start with Gary, and then um, I'll talk to Nelson and Joseph. Gary, how do we get the fans into our stadiums? Okay. Okay, so... Um, um, Nelson, how do we get the fans into our stadiums? Looking at you know the culture of support here and the culture of support in other parts of the world. Uh, yes, I, I think uh, what we need to do, we still need to do quite a lot in that space, uh, mm. bringing the fans back to the stadium. But you see, bringing the fans to the stadium borders on s some factors. Mm. One, the quality of play, which also determines the quality of entertainment okay. that the fans get. Uh, to the ambience of the environment in terms of the excitement, what will actually attract them to come to the stadium. Mm. Then also publicity. Sometimes when these matches take place, many of these fans don't even, they don't have the right communication on when these matches are going to take place. So mm. we need to improve on communication to ensure that a lot of these fans, well ahead of time, know when these matches are going to take place so that with effective communication, the other factor, again, is that a lot of the clubs need to bond with uh, people in their own community. Mm. The bonding is very, very important. You know, one of the biggest um, uh, factors in many of the other developed leagues, you see, you have a lot of uh, different levels of youth academies. Mm. And, and with that, when, when the children start the youth academy program from probably age 9, age 10, mm. You have under 10, under 11, under 12, and so on and so forth. The parents of these kids and these kids, yeah. there's that bonding you create yeah. because it is the children in that community that will come to these academies. Mm -hmm. and, and by so, uh, with that approach, you get a lot of people showing interest in the development of the club. So there's still quite a lot we'll do in that area. But I can assure you going into the next season, uh, you can see the, the numbers are increasing now, mm. but we also realize the fact that we still need to do much in that space to yeah. bring the fans because we talked about value mm. for the partners. Mm. Those are some of the things that also the partners are very much interested in. And we'll do quite, apart from that, we need to look at other things that will excite the fans. So many other activities that will make the fans crave to want to watch these matches. Non-football activities. Non-football activities. Yeah. There are other side activities, promos, and all those stuff mm. you do that will also arouse that interest in these fans. So those are some... Then, one other thing I think we we'll also need to do, like I said, the engagement of the clubs with the community. I mean, the, the good players of this team, we need to showcase them mm. and actually celebrate them and create that heroic... Um, um, situation around them because mm. it's very very important mm. the hyping of the good players mm. and like um, gary mentioned information about these players their mm. statistics clips yeah. on their biography yeah. Yeah. so there's quite a lot and even the behind the scene activities that will make fans want to come to the stadium to watch some of those things mm. they have been exposed to okay. so so those are very very key and important okay joseph what do you what do you have to say uh, do we have gary back Okay. I think for me, when I look at the fans, there are three things I look at. Mm. First and foremost, you need to get the share of the mind of the fans. You okay. need to engage their mind yeah. so that, you know, they start thinking about African football. And uh, probably that's how we can run away from, I, I think we made uh, reference to the European League. Once you get the share of mind, 
then you get the placement of your brand. Your brand placement uh, is there. Once you've done the replacement, and ultimately as a club, you get asset utilization. This is where now you get value for money. And uh, also during matches, what I've noticed in the African context, we've just concentrated on the 90 minutes. But you see, be before the 90 minutes, there's a, before the match, the pre-match experience. Uh, mm -hmm. I think Nelson has alluded to most of the things that you need to do. And also the after the match experience. So it's in three parts. The experience before the match, the experience during the match, and the experience after the match. And when you look at the demographics, uh, when I look at the Zambian League, it's the traditional way, the old guys who built up the passion. However, there's one great opportunity that we need to tap in. By this, I mean the millennials and the Gen Z population. Well, when you look at uh, this categorization, demographically, they lack that attention span. In our case, I remember in the 80s when Zambia was playing, when I was at university, we would start off at 04 in the morning, 4 a.m., mm. get to the stadium, the match is at uh, 3 p.m. We could afford to stay, but you see, the current generation, they don't have that, uh, that, that, that uh, attention span. Yeah. So we need to create that atmosphere to, to engage you know, the Gen Z and the millennials. Uh, I think with that done, I can only hope for the better, for the future of the fans, you know, and getting that the right critical mass on which the sponsors will leverage on. Okay. Guy. Hello, Guy. Oh, okay. All right, I think we've Did lost, we've lost Guy. But here's the, um, okay, so, we have the fans. We have identified the fans. How do we win the fans? Very critical. You mentioned, mentioned uh, culture. Um, and he's talking about, you know, basically, we're talking culture. We're talking quality football. We're talking high pin players. Because, see, if fans follow stars. Sure. Hello, Gary. Yes, I'm here. I can hear you clearly. Oh, OK. So let me just run this up, and, and then you can say, fans follow stars. If you don't have stars, you don't have anything, right? Because it's the it's 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 not the football itself, but the, but you know the stories around the the football and the stories are usually around the the, the stars, right? So in Nigeria, I do not know that there are may, the few stars that there are are not really big stars, right? So until we start to pay them a lot of money uh, and, that, and they create aspirational values around them, it, it might be a bit difficult, but you know, Gary, we're talking about fans. How do we get fans into our stadiums? Well, I think you, you started by answering part of it. Uh, we, we, we need to get stars into those stadiums for fans to develop an affinity. And I think that's it. I mean, it's, it's so crucial because fans do not like the fact that, you know, they, they, they develop a passion for one player they love him for six months just when they are they are developing a, a relationship with the player then he's gone to sudan or vietnam or yeah some that, other place. That, that's that's you very know. true yeah so i think i think that is such a huge problem, a big problem. because we can talk about the the lack of information but basically when there are stars people just follow and come because i mean as a fan myself you know, beyond being a journalist. Obviously, you gravitate toward certain fixtures than others, even as a press man, to yeah. be honest. Mm. You, you want to watch all games. Mm. But when they say these two teams who may not be the biggest in the league mm. Mm. are playing, you know that, oh, this player and this player are in this team, so I would like to watch them. So I, I believe that that is a, a, a key way that we can get the fans in there. Okay. Then, of course, yeah. we need to keep spoiling them with information. Mm. That is always what I always say. Just keep them informed. Let them know what's happening in camp. Let them know what's what's going on with the players behind the scenes and stuff like that. Mm. I think it's it, it's a, also a shortcut to get them to the stadium, even if you don't have fans for the moment. Okay, so I'll, I'll ask this next question. Guy, you, you'd say, you'd give your response, and then I'll go to jo Joseph, and then Nelson. 
Nelson, I can, I can, I can, uh, I can, <laughs> I can plead with you to give me time. Okay, so here's the thing: it's about culture, the culture of support in sub-Saharan Africa, as opposed to the culture of support in, say, Europe, for instance. In Europe, th these guys, their teams might be in in the non-league division, yet they have full support. What is it that they're doing that we're not doing? What can we learn from, this, from these guys to ensure that we, we invest in our communities and then you know, um, have clubs that, you know, for the communities, it goes beyond just the football. It goes to the you know, stake for their children. It goes to uh, jobs created in the community. It goes to pride and things like that. What do we need to do, Gary, quickly? And then we'll talk to jo Joseph and then I can well, release yeah. you. Um, to the extent that I don't want this to be a general talk shop. So, you know, in Ghana, the situation is dire. But there are a few clubs who have cracked it. And how do they do it? They do that by engaging with the community. Mm. So there's a team in, in, in the west of Ghana called Midiama. They played in Africa like two seasons ago. They, they constantly have full stadium. If you go to the middle belt of Ghana, the teams there are known as the, the hotbed of Ghana football. Because up to date, they still have full stadium. Why? The teams very much interact with the community. And so the people feel like they are part of the team. Mm. And it's as simple as that. Okay. I really think it's as simple as that. Okay. You know, if you are my friend, um, Erufo, mm. and you check up on me, yeah. I will come to your house. It's as simple as that. Okay. So the clubs check up on the people. They buy from the people. A, a woman who sells outside the stadium is in the community. Everybody knows her. You know, you, sometimes we think it's rocket science, but it's not. I went to Borussia Dortmund in the, the I think in the five kilometer radius, there's a deliberate effort to ensure that the, the person who bakes the things for the stadium comes from the community. Yeah. The person who makes traditional beer for the team comes from the community. Yeah. Of course you will come to the stadium. Yeah. And we have such examples in Ghana. So I believe that we are conscious about doing that, whether it's in Zambia, it's in the community. You know, just just give the people and a reason to be part of the team. A their sense of ownership. Their grandchildren will come and they will follow you to the stadium. I think it's as simple as that. Uh, the, very well said, Gary. What about you, Joseph? What's the what's the culture in Zambia like? Do you have um, clubs that are very uh, immersed in their communities? Oh yes, oh yes. I think uh, there's one one about four the household names. And but uh, if you go back to the Zambian history, you know we're a copper producing country. Yeah. We had the mines running football. Football was prevalent in our mining area. Unfortunately, in the 90s, the mines were privatized. And most of those teams really un uh, went under Tory times, mm. uh, including, uh, you know, much attendance went down. But obviously, over the years, um, the mines have come back. Those household names are still there, not as much as they were before, but slowly they are coming back. But ideally, uh, uh, in line with Gary, what Gary has uh, said, we need to mind the value chain. We need to go to the schools. We need to go to academies. You get the point. Right through, you need to engage all stakeholders, like we have uh, we had alluded to before, mm. in order to get back, uh, you know, the funds. Yeah. But in terms of the culture. When you look at um, our friends in Europe, you see the kids, the passion, the children. So, you know, that culture starts from the homes. Maybe that's where we're missing it in Africa. We also need to start going in my homes. I'm, I'm embarrassed to say that I've got two sons. Uh, one of them supports Barcelona. The other one supports Real Madrid. They support none of the Zambian teams. But anyway, that's a million dollar challenge I have. I need to get them now that I'm running the Premier League. I just need to get them and it has to start from home like I'm giving an example. I had to give a best example of myself. Just to start from home. Okay. Yeah. Joseph, I'm going to send this clip of, the, of this conversation to your president. Um, yes. To, and you have to go and explain why your children are supporting Barcelona and Real Madrid and not, and not Zesco United <laughs> <laughs> or Zanaco. <laughs> So um, let's bring this home, um, um, uh, Nelson, quickly. Just, just 
summarize what you think we need to do in Sub-Saharan Africa to, to get our, our, our football going again? Yes. Um, well, we, we need to build the trust and confidence of both the fans, the partners that we are dealing with, mm. and um, the infrastructure. And we also need to pay much attention to the media, mm. the publicity, the behind, so many other things we need to look at critically. Also, the transparency and the integrity of the officiating of the league is very, very important. We know the basic fundamentals that we need to address to mm. get our league up to speed. Mm. And those are the factors we are focusing on now. But I will still tell you there's still quite a lot of work to do. And we are very much aware of what we expected to do. And we are addressing all of them. And you can see the improvements in the league in the last two sure, years. Sure, sure. But we also expect yeah. to get a better league this third year. And the area of the fans engagement becomes a very critical area. Mm. We are going to focus on going into this season. Okay. Gary, you, can, you, can you just quickly round up for us what we need to do to improve our football in Sub-Saharan Africa? I think I've, I've always maintained that the solutions are not rocket science. Yeah. But we just have to be, you know, willing to put in the work. That's it. Okay. You know, because... Yes, it's the, the, even the Europeans who viewing figures in the English Premier League are going down. Hmm. People going to the stadium. Why? Let me explain for 15 seconds. The age of people who got season tickets is dropping from about 50s to 20s because it is the 50 and 60 year olds who have the spending and purchasing oh, power oh, yeah. to go to football 34 games a season. Hmm. The young people are bending with so many things and so the teams are looking for new ways to bring the younger audiences to the stadium. Mm. So it is not just in Africa where we are having issues with not, but some people have decided to think. Mm. We should also decide to think yeah. and get our fans to the stadium in our locally sustainable ways, and I think we can do it. Okay, cool. Um, Joseph, your last word, please. Let's get the finances right. Yeah. Let's engage the uh, the stakeholders effectively. Let's get the processes right to create the right sustainability and let's engage the right people. Okay. And so we've, we've come to the end of, of the program. Um, it's been nice having all of you with, uh, with me in the studio today. Thank you very much, Nelson, for always making time to, to come and uh, you know, push on your MPFL message. Thank you, Gary. Thank I you, viewers. Thank you, Gary. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Gary. I know the sacrifices that you have had to make uh, to meet this program, and I thank you for it. Um, so you're released. You can go and um, get get you. Go, you can go and meet your or guys now. Uh, <laughs> you can go and bring, take them sure, where, sure. where you're supposed to take them. Sure. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Gary. And Joseph, thank you too for for this. We are going to have several more opportunities to engage on this. The the, the top the the football in sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, and sports generally in sub-Saharan Africa is such a wide topic that it will take years and years to cover it all. You know what I mean? So we're going to be engaging on a, on a const constant basis. I hope when, I, when we call again, you'd answer um, our invite. Thank you very much. And to you viewers, I hope you have had a, a good time uh, today listening, listening to Gary, Joseph, and Nelson. I hope you've learned a thing or two that uh, hopefully would open an opportunity or two for you or your organization. Until we meet again next week, this is Urufo Izaga saying, be productive, be good, and stay safe.